if you want to become wealthy and seriously wealthy not like oh i have a little bit of money no you want to become wealthy you got to put in what i call that decade of sacrifice where you're working to spend less and earn more that way you have more money to invest most people are not willing to go through that sacrifice because that means i can't have that gucci belt today so i can have more investments today i can't show off my stock portfolio or my real estate portfolio the way that i can my gucci belt and most people would rather have the show would rather have the look than the actual thing that will make you wealthy you have to know how to spend your money the right way first the first mistake or the first issue that people face is how do i actually become wealthy how do i invest my money for wealth when i have no extra money and this is where you have to start with your spending because that is the most accessible thing that you can do and this is where now how do you spend this money in a world where the world wants you every money your job now is to be a smart consumer and a financially educated investor that way now you can have the nice stuff but also benefit from the way that the system works. So now going back to this topic of spending money, you were saying, how much should you invest? This is where I would say, start off with a simple system. I like to say 75, 15, 10, which means that for every dollar that you earn from here on out, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you should be investing. 10 cents is the minimum you should be saving. Now what you do now, you ideally want to create three different bank accounts and automate this whole process. So you get paid, it goes into one bank account, and then you have an automatic withdrawal deposit where the money is pulled out of one account, put into your investment bank account, and put into your savings bank account. That way, you don't accidentally spend your investing money, you don't accidentally take your emergency savings money and use it to buy a new TV. So you want to automate it, and a lot of banks will do this for free, uh, where you just automate it, that way you don't see that money. So now it's a matter of, okay, understanding that, hey, the way that the system works, it encourages me to spend. Now, what do I spend my money on? Mm -hmm. And this is where knowing, okay, I need to spend a little bit less on things that aren't producing me with value. That way I can make myself rich before I make everybody else rich. Mm -hmm. No matter how much money you make, you're always paying yourself first. Mm -hmm. And by paying yourself first, I don't mean going on buying a new Gucci wallet or belt. You're paying yourself by buying assets which make you wealthy mm -hmm. before you go out and spend your money to make somebody else rich. Because <clears throat> why do wealthy people want to own investments? Well, they want to own things that pay them. This is where if you look at the mindset of a broke person and a wealthy person or somebody who wants to become wealthy, we're not looking at how much money they have in the bank. Somebody who wants to become wealthy and somebody who is broke, their mindsets are very different because Broke people, middle class people, they make money to spend money. Well, wealthy people and wealthy minded people make money to grow their money. And what does that mean? That means they're making money for one purpose, to buy these assets, these investments that pay them for owning it. And it's a completely right. different way of thinking. Because when most people make $1,000, they think, I can go buy a new watch. I can go on a vacation. I can go out to a nice dinner. When somebody who is wealthy or wants to become wealthy makes that grand, they say, where can I put this money to work so this $1,000 can become $2,000? Or so this $1,000 can pay me with dividends every month or every quarter or every year so I'm getting some cash yeah. flow from these investments. <clears throat> this is where now we talked about 75, 15, 10. That 15, the money that you're putting towards your investments, where do you put this money? So you can start with you know, your traditional retirement accounts, which can offer some tax advantages, uh, whether it's a Roth or a traditional 401k or IRA. Now, beyond that, this is where now you have a lot of opportunity because this is the area now that no one's really operating in because most people assume I'm putting my money into my 401k, so I should be fine, right? No, this is where you have to now look at what are the other opportunities? And I'm gonna break this down into your passive opportunities and active opportunities. So let's start with the passive side because now what passive investing is, it's you're taking some of your money every time you get paid, and it's automatically going to be invested. Uh, what I say is it's got to be automatic, consistent, and passive. So you want this to be a system where no matter what's happening in the economy, no matter what's happening in the world, you're going to just passively and automatically have some of this money invested into something. Now, where can this money go? Well, the most common passive investments are into the stock market. Uh, now, because of technology, you can also invest into real estate indirectly into some funds passively. 
And what the stock market allows you to do is we're talking about that economic system. You have the economy, the businesses, the investors, mm -hmm. and consumers. When you invest in the stock market, you become one of the investors. You now own a piece of the economic system. Because if you invest in the Amazon stock, even if it's just one share, you become one of the owners of the Amazon corporation. Now, this is where most people assume that you have to pick stocks to invest in the stock market. Well, mm -hmm. let's look at the numbers historically, because what you'll see is historically, the stock market over the last century has gone up by around 10% a year. Yeah, we see crashes. I mean, we see crashes like what, every decade or so? Mm -hmm. We see dips, but if the market historically has gone up on average, not every year it's gone up 10%, some years more, some years less, but on average it's gone up about 10%, how are most people losing money in the market? Well, most people are investing their money in the stock market the wrong way. If you're not willing or don't want to research companies, you don't want to keep up with earnings calls, you don't want to read the financial statements, you don't need to invest in individual companies. You can be a passive investor and invest in funds that give you exposure to the broader stock market. The key here now is you invest when the market's up and down. You don't change it. So when you see the market crash happen, you don't stop, you keep investing. The only thing that you would change is potentially buy more. Yes. Because when you see these types of market pullbacks, <clears> most <throat> people are selling and they're running away because they're panicking and getting scared that my investment is going down. That's when you want to be coming and buying aggressively because now investments are going on sale. And so this is where it's, again, that mindset shift of understanding what is it that you want to be investing in and how long are you investing for? If you're investing for the long term, who cares what's happening in the next two months yeah. or next two years? Mm -hmm. You're right. investing for the next 20 years. I call it a decade of sacrifice. If you want to become wealthy, and seriously wealthy, not like, oh, I have a little bit of money. No, you want to become wealthy. you got to put in what I call that decade of sacrifice where you're working to spend less and earn more. That way you have more money to invest. And most people are not willing to go through that sacrifice because that means I can't have that Gucci belt today so I can have more investments today. I can't show off my stock portfolio or my real estate portfolio the way that I can my Gucci belt. And most people would rather have the show, would rather have the look than the actual thing that will make you wealthy. Right. And that you know, goes back to the mindset, the thing you talk so much about. Your mindset has to be focused on saying, you know what, I want to become wealthy. And that's hard because now, for one, you have to be convinced yourself. And now you might have a spouse, you might have kids. And that means you all have to be on the same page financially, right? Because this is a money is a team game yes. and we're going to build something that we've never seen before. And that's that first mindset where mm. now I believe I can do it. I'm going to do it. Now you start putting in that sacrifice. This is where now the passive investing is the most accessible way for somebody to start investing. Next is active investing. And I also should mention that you can do passive and active investing. When we talk about active investing, what does this mean first? This means now that you are going out, finding investment opportunities to invest in, and then you're putting your money in. And uh, now this is where the research is important. So like, for example, with business, I invest in my own businesses. I also invest in some startups. Startup investing is very risky. Nine out of 10 startups will statistically fail. So I know that when I invest my money in these startups, a big chunk of this money will, I will probably never see again. And this goes to now, how wealthy do you want to become? And how does that align with your goals? Because there's three factors that will determine how wealthy you will become. This is math. One is how long you invest your money for at the time. Two is what return you're getting on your money. And third is how much money you invest. We can't go back in time. You can't go back 10 years ago and start investing. So the best time to start is today. So time is out of the picture. The third thing is how do you save your money the right way? Understanding really the difference between needs versus wants, assets versus liabilities, and not, I mean, it kind of ties in with spending, but it's not justifying liabilities as assets. Assets are something that put money in your pocket. Liabilities are things that cost you money. You need a car to get to home from work. You just want a Beamer. You need some clothes. You just want the Gucci. Yeah. You want a home. You know, actually, you need a home. You just want the mansion, right? Being that smart consumer and a financially educated investor is so much more mental than it is financial. Just look at a financial street. Like, okay, this is the most you can spend. Now you figure out where you spend this money. That's the financial side of investing. The mental side is now, what are people gonna think when you go from a BMW to a Camry. Yeah. And now people are like, hey, are you okay? Like, is your car in the shop? Like, <laughs> no, this is my new car, right? And and th that's that tough part when people look at you like you lost your mind. And now what are you gonna do at that point? Mm -hmm. Are you going to accept it and say, you know what? I am making a change in my life. 
Or are you going to give in and say, ah, you know what, let's go on a vacation, let's go do something. Earning now is, you built a system. 75, wow. 15, 10, every time you make money, some of your money is being spent, some of your money is being invested, some of your money is being saved. Now it's, I kind of like this financial education stuff. How can I amplify the system? You gotta put more fuel on the fire. How do you do that? You need to earn more money. Now, this is where, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of people look for that quick and easy way. I mean, who doesn't want to get rich quick, right? It, it, that's, it's, it's very appealing. All right. But now it's understanding how you can work hard and work smart because most of us are taught that hard work is rewarded, and it is. But you have to complement this hard work with smart work. Like, if the hardest people in America were compensated by their level of work, construction workers would be the highest paid people in America. Yeah. But they're not. We're compensated completely differently. And this makes a lot of people angry. Because you say, man, I put in 20 hours, I put in 12 hours, I put in a break in my back, and this is all I'm making? And this is where why we need to be taught how our financial system works. Because we're all a piece of this puzzle. But most of us are only consumers. We're never taught how to benefit from the way the economic system works.